Packers. Vikings. Red State. Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But no matter how different we are, we're all connected, and we can all make a difference. That's why United Way brings people, expertise, and resources together to improve the education, income, and health of our communities, the building blocks for a better life. When we live united, our efforts, magnified by others, add up to real change. Children succeed in school, families gain financial stability, the health of our neighbors improves, and suddenly, so do our communities. But real change won't happen without you. Live, live united. united. So let's look beyond our differences. Live, live united. Yes. One by one, let's make a difference. Let's reach out a hand to one and influence the condition of all. <laughs> live, live united. united. <laughs> Give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. Sign up today at liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. I'm Jacob Seelman. And I'm Tom Baker. You're listening to Speed 77 Radio. Powered by Race Chaser Online. We are your home for motorsports. Hello everyone and welcome to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report. I am Tom Baker, your host for the next 30 minutes of Motorsports Conversation. And I am joined tonight, not by my usual co-host Kyle Souza. Kyle will be joining us in recorded form here in just a few moments. Uh, but Kyle had um, other commitments this evening, so filling in quite capably for young Mr. Souza will be our producer, who we sometimes bring out from behind the glass on Thursday nights, does such a great job of hosting the Motorsports Madness show on Tuesday nights here on Race Chaser Online and Speed 77 Radio. Jacob Seelman joining us as a co-host this evening. And Jacob, we have got quite a show. Yes, we do. And uh, thank you for having me out from behind the glass tonight, Tom. It's nice to come out from the cage back there and uh, stretch the legs a little bit, but we certainly do have a lot to talk about. It's Snowball Derby Week. Yes, it is. Snowball Derby Week indeed. A lot of stuff going on at uh, Five Flags Speedway today with uh, practice as we get set for the 40, I think it's the 46th annual Snowball Derby uh, presented by JEGS. Uh, at uh, Five Flags, and over 40 cars entered once again in the super late model portion. And, of course, along with that, there's the Snowflake 100. We are going to talk with Mason Mingus in just a few moments. Mason's down the racing. Of course, Mason may be better known at this point for his good work with Wintron Racing in both the ARCA series and the nascar camping world truck series uh so mason will be joining us here in just a few moments we are going to be hearing from kyle souza because of course is our race chaser speed 77 radio new england motorsports insider and man the modified scene up there jacob has just gone off the rails with silly season stuff in the last uh, couple of weeks or so and looking forward to hearing from Kyle about that. Yeah, it's uh, he and I had some pretty interesting conversation earlier this afternoon. Uh, of course, as you said, Kyle going to be joining us from the recorded and the phone lines here shortly. But uh, you're right, silly season in full swing up in the Northeast, and a couple of big names making some big announcements earlier this week on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Yep, going to need a scorecard to recognize the players uh, for the 2014 season on the tour. We'll get to that. And also, you uh, managed to chat with Kyle Weatherman, another one of the young racers who's made his name in the ARCA series here recently. Uh, so we've got uh, a triple header of interviews here coming up. We're going to get started right away. Tell us about Mason Mingus. Mason Mingus, uh, as you said, Tom, a lot of success in the ARCA Racing Series this season. Uh, two poles on the ARCA car, no wins, couldn't quite get that breakthrough to victory lane, but he finished second in the points to Frank Kimmel, made a couple of truck starts before the end of the season, uh, showed some real promise at Homestead, Miami, before he got caught up in one of those uh, melees on the green-white checker finishes that ultimately decided that race. But uh, Mason, going back to his roots, he won a pro-late model championship back in 
2010 and will still run the Pro and Super Late models from time to time. He's entered in both the Snowflake 100 and the Snowball Derby this weekend. Between the two races, 135 cars turning out to Five Flags Speedway to try and qualify for the Alan Turner Hyundai Snowflake 100 and the 46th annual, as you said, Snowball Derby. These events pull out the big names, Tom. Uh, NASCAR stars like Dakota Armstrong, well-known names like Chase Elliott, John Hunter Nemechek, Joanna Long, a past winner of this race, Ross Kenseth, Eric Jones, the defending winner who we saw in the Camping World Truck Series go to victory lane at Phoenix earlier this year, Kyle Benjamin, always a threat, David Reagan, and of course Mason Mingus, who actually was fastest in pre- uh, snowball testing here just last weekend. He's got a very fast car, and uh, as we talked to him earlier, he thinks he's got a shot to win it this weekend. Well, let's uh, hear from him right now. You have uh, you managed to get an interview with him in the wee hours of the morning here. This Well, not quite the wee hours, but close enough. And uh, let's uh, hear from Mason and hear what he had to say. Mason, first off, thank you for taking some time to talk with us here this afternoon. You had a very, very successful 2013 season in the ARCA series. Ultimately finished second in points, a couple of poles. Never did get the breakthrough win you were looking for this season. But talking about your 2013 season, a lot of success. How do you grade your season, and what do you look back on here as we come to the end of the year? You know, all in all, I think uh, myself and the guys at Wintron and on top of that, our sponsors, call it one one before you dig, and that equipment put together a pretty a pretty solid season. Um, we definitely were were going out to uh, try to win the championship this year, and it, and we fell short of that by a little bit. But um, we ran second to probably the best there is in the arc racing series, and I got to learn a lot and learn a lot from Frank himself. You know, we we did that that win eluded us a little bit, and I and I think we <laughs> we definitely had some cars to do it there. Probably a couple times we got. Got caught up in just something out of our control and uh, had a mechanical failure, you know, at one race that looked like we were going to win. But all in all, we, we learned a lot, and that was the whole goal this year is, is to learn a lot. And obviously, we won the championship, but if we couldn't get it, we wanted to come out with, I wanted to come out with some experience that I can carry over into next year and, and into years that are going to come to us. And uh, hopefully, we can put something together to be able to run next year. Not sure what that will be in, but hopefully, this experience that I gained this year is going to pay off dividends next year. You've risen up the ranks pretty quickly over the last couple years, uh, pro late model to uh, super late models and then into the ARCA Racing Series, won a pro late model championship in the Ken 10 Series, and now you're really returning to your uh, late model roots here towards the end of the year, uh, running the Snowball Derby this weekend. What's it like for you transitioning back and forth from the full-bodied stock cars back to your roots in the late model, and what do you think your chances are for the Snowball this weekend? You were really fast in practice last weekend. Yeah, I love it. Anytime I get to get a chance to come back and run a super late model, it's so much fun. And um, you know, I'm I mean we bring our same team and I've always run a late model for out of Louisville, Kentucky, Kevin Gardner is a crew chief, but we also get to bring some guys that do that have been ARCA racing with us all year that they come and help us out. And it's just really fun to, to take a couple take a couple weekends out of the year to relax and, and not worry about chasing points or anything like that. We just get to go out and, and run the best that we can and, and have fun with it. The cars, they're, they're very different. It always takes me a few laps to, uh, to adjust, but it was pretty cool. Earlier this year, I got to run an ARCA car in a late model on the same weekend at Winchester, so that was pretty cool. And it was definitely tough to do. Uh, the transition was hard when you climb out of one at practice and go get in the other. You know, it really helps. It helps you learn, and, and you got to find the points on the racetrack where, where you're going to drive the car different. You have to be able to adjust to it quickly. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun, and I love any time I'm going to get in the seat of a race car. It really doesn't matter what car. You've got a, a very tough weekend ahead of you, 300 laps for the Snowball Derby at Five Flags Speedway. You've had a good bit of track time already at the Bullring in Pensacola. For you, what's been the uh, toughest thing about Five Flags that uh, may make it a challenge, or what's something you've learned that may help you for Sunday afternoon's race? Um, I think definitely tires. Uh, you got to conserve tires the whole race. That's the key to the show is being able to have a set of tires in your pits at the end and, and, and just sitting back and riding for the first 200, 250 laps. Um, that's something, you know, everybody comes down here to the biggest race of the year. I mean, this is like the Super Bowl short track race, and they get really keyed up and excited and use up all their stuff in the beginning of the race, and then they don't have anything at the end. So as long as we can keep that pounded in our head throughout the weekend, I think we'll be fine. And we definitely have a car that's 
that's fast and, and that we, you know, should have a shot to win this race, I think. I mean, we it, we felt like we had a very comfortable car in the test here. And if we can pound in our heads and just be conservative and, and wait till the end, I, you know, I don't see any reason that we don't have a shot at this thing. And um, hopefully I'm not speaking too soon because we haven't even qualified yet. But, uh, you know, I feel pretty confident in the car that we brought here. 18 years old, finishing up high school. Uh, you've been a high school wrestler in addition to some of your racing duties. Uh, what's it been like for you balancing the two uh, over the past couple of years uh, between the ARCA Racing Series and your school studies as well? Yeah, you know, that was tough. Um, you know, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have traded for anything. I, I played three sports on top of racing in school. I was able to do it. Uh, it was, you know, Glad I went, you know, to the small school that I did because my teachers and coaches were willing to work with me, and and as long as I was able to make up my schoolwork and things like that, I was able to be excused from school. But I, you know, it kept me busy for sure. Um, so I couldn't imagine squeezing in anything else than I did um, in high school. But you know, it, it definitely helped me be more responsible and, and being able to manage my time moving forward in life. And uh, you know, after I graduated high school, I I moved within two weeks to Mooresville, North Carolina, so I can be in the shop with the guys and working on the race cars and been doing that for the last couple months. Finishing up 2013, this is the final weekend of racing for you, but looking forward now a little bit, 2014, you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but what's on the horizon for you for 2014? Do you have anything lined up yet, or where are we going to see Mason Mingus on track next year? We're not really sure yet. Can't can't really say everything, but... um... You know, I, I think we had some stuff in the last couple of weeks working that um, should be pretty positive, and hopefully we can we can do something. We you know we should be racing next year. Not entirely sure in what yet, whether it be ARCA or you know maybe trucks or who knows. But um, we should be on the racetrack next year, and, and, I, and I'm pretty excited about what should be able to happen for next season. Speaking of the truck starts, you had made two truck starts towards the end of the year in 2013 with the Wintron team. Uh, what was it like for you? Uh, any major differences between the ARCA car and the truck uh, moving up a level? Yeah, there, there was a lot of differences. They didn't drive very similar. Um, you know, that was a big transition for me and, and a really big learning curve. And, you know, I think the first two starts in Aldega, unfortunately, that one got cut short on us by about four we fell out of the race due to mechanical failure but you know i got to go learn a lot at phoenix and that's a very technical racetrack for what really was my first truck start but it was it was great to have that as my first start because i, I didn't go to an easy racetrack we went to one of the toughest racetracks on the schedule and you know i was able to get a feel for that and then going into homestead which was our last truck start i think that paid off got a better feel for the truck going into that race and i think we could have had a solid run going at homestead we kind of rode around and took, you know, and stayed patient the entire race, and I think we would have come out with top 12, but everything got so crazy at the end, we were just kind of a victim of, of an accident um, right in front of us. But as far as comparing them to the Arca cars, they were similar, but also had a lot of big differences, just the aero stuff and way, the way the air hits the car and when you get in traffic, the way, how the truck reacts, it was, it was a lot different. But I'm glad I got to experience it three times this year. So then uh, moving into hopefully next year, if I get a chance to do some more truck stuff, that I'll have a step up going in there. Coming down to the end of the season, I know you can't do it alone. The kid from Brentwood, Tennessee, now trying to make his mark on the national scene. A lot of people helping you uh, make it happen. A lot of supporters, both in front of the scenes and behind the scenes as well. Talk a little bit about who makes it happen for Mason Mingus. I'd say, number one, I have to thank my mom and dad. I mean, they're the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing. And, and helping give me this opportunity and all the guys at Wintron Racing, they, they've done a fantastic job this year and we've built a really solid relationship with those guys and we hope going into next year, whatever we're going to do, that it's going to be with those guys. We spent a lot of time together and, and, and raced pretty well this year. I was pretty happy with, with the cars that we took to the racetrack, so I'm waiting to hopefully get in some of their cars again. On top of that, our sponsors, Call 811 for you dig and Diamond Equipment, um, did an awesome job. Let's get to the racetrack every, every week this year. You know, hopefully that we can get a little bit more help on board to get us to get us to the racetrack again next year you know i couldn't do it without my family and, and without our sponsors and certainly looking forward to a lot of good things coming for you in 2014 mason thank you for taking some time to talk with us here this evening and we look forward to all the best for you and hope as you get some things short away for 2014 you'll keep us posted on your plans absolutely thanks for having me on here and in case uh, any of you were wondering where the fastest man in uh, pre-derby practice ended up today on the speed charts, Mason Mingus was 13th overall in snowball derby practice this uh, earlier this afternoon. Uh, Bubba Pollard 
The Southern Super Series runner-up was quickest. Augie Grill, always a perennial contender at the Derby, was second. And Daniel Hemrick, the Southern Super Series champion, was third in snowball derby practice. Hemrick was also fastest, Tom, in practice for the Snowflake 100 for the Pro Late Models. He had the field covered there by almost a tenth and a half. Cue the E-Trade baby shock face. Huh? I know, right? What a surprise. Yeah, Daniel is certainly tough to beat, the Pro 8 model. And he's just as tough for the Super And I got to tell you, he's just liable to win both races. Daniel is just having one of those seasons where everything is falling into place for him. And good for him. He's an outstanding young man. And it's uh, it's been great to watch him kind of progress through the ranks from the Bandoleros up through the Legends into the late models. And now, of course, having had a couple of opportunities in a, a Camping World truck. And hopefully that will be more for next year. So the Snowball Derby, everything getting underway with qualifying tomorrow and continuing right into the weekend. Hopefully Mother Nature holds off for all the folks at Five Flags. The racing is safe. Should be a phenomenal 46th annual Snowball Derby at uh, Five Flags Speedway down there in Pensacola, Florida. And with that, we are going to throw our first caution flag of the evening here on the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report. We will be back right after this where we will talk about we will talk with Kyle Souza about modifieds up in New England and we'll also chat with ARCA series up and comer Kyle Weatherman. Back with more after this on Race Chaser Online and Speed 77 Radio. For 17 years, Stock Car Steel has been a leading material supplier to the racing industry. We're proud they're a motorsports content partner here at Race Chaser Online. The biggest names in NASCAR trust Stock Car Steel for raw materials such as carbon steel, chrome molly, DOM, aluminum, plastics, and much more. You can't build a race car without the basic materials, and Stock Car Steel is the place to get them. Don't forget to also visit Stock Car Steel's sister company, SRI Supplies, for racing and industry. SRI is the place to go for all your shop supply needs. Not bolts, rivets, tapes, adhesives, cutting tools, chemicals, body shop supplies, paint shop supplies, lubricants, and more. A well-stocked race shop is a winning race shop, and the path to winning begins with three letters, SRI. For more information, visit StockCarSteel.com or SRI-Supplies.com. Check them both out on Facebook or call them toll-free at 1-888-752-7272, 1-888-752-7272. I'm Jacob Seelman. And I'm Tom Baker. You're listening to Speed 77 Radio. Powered by Race Chaser Online. We are your home for motorsports. Welcome back to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report. Tom Baker along with Jacob Seelman. We've been discussing the 46th annual Snowball Derby, which is underway with uh, practice down in Pensacola, Florida. We are going to go to the opposite side of the East Coast. We're going to go due north and switch gears from super late models and pro late models to NASCAR wheel and modifieds. And Jacob a lot of stuff happening on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour all of a sudden. Silly season in full force, even more than usual. And I know that uh, Kyle Souza wasn't able to join us for the show tonight, but you did have a chance to talk with him about some of that stuff. And, man, it's just gone crazy up there. <laughs> if I didn't know any better, I'd think they've lost their minds up there in the Northeast. And, you know, no doubt some of them have up there for the Wheel and Modified Tour. But a great series. Looks to be downsizing some as far as full-time competitors in 2014. But uh, some big announcements being made by some of the stars of the Wheel and Modified Tour. And uh, certainly, you know Kyle Souza. He's got an opinion on all things modified up there in the Northeast. Yeah, he certainly does. Uh, and uh, Kyle, if he has something to say, he's already said it. And uh, you talked with him earlier, and he said a mouthful. Let's check it out. Kyle Souza talking about modified racing on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour and the game of musical chairs. Kyle, technology problems keeping you out of the live booth, but good to have you back on the show, catching up via phone here this evening. Certainly a lot's happened over the last couple days in the Northeast and the Modified World that we've got to talk about tonight, as well as a wrap-up from the Turkey Derby from over the weekend as well. Yeah, Jacob, you know, interesting, uh, we announced we're going to start on one point with the Millennium Modified Racing Series. 
Uh, over the past couple of seasons at the Seacock Speedway, dating back to 2004, uh, the Millennium Modified Racing Series was part of the D'Anthony Vandetti Fall Classic. Well, coming out yesterday and first reco- uh, re- recorded by RacedayConnecticut.com was that the Millennium Modified Racing Series and Director Scott Tapley will not be a part of the annual DAV Fall Classic in October at Seacock. Uh, that event was replaced with a $5,000 to win Pro Stock Super Late Model event, and instead... Millennium Modified Racing Series will join Seacock Speedway's opening day program on Sunday afternoon, May 4th. Uh, they'll be the first feature for Seacock in 2014. So an exciting note on behalf of the Millennium Modified Racing Series from that concern, which also turns us towards a former member of the Millennium Modified Racing Series that is now going to be competing full-time in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Uh, the ride that was driven last year by Mike Stefanik in the 22 is now going to be driven by young gun Tommy Barrett, who will run full-time in 2014 behind the wheel of car number 22. Uh, I was talking with Mike Stefanik. It was seen that uh, he and the 22 team parted ways a couple of weeks ago. It just came out that uh, the ride was going to be vacant. Uh, he was a past winner at the Bristol Motor Speedway in that car. had a lot of success in 2012. Uh, not really a championship effort for him but he was strong throughout much of the season. Uh, he's right now unsure of what's going to happen for him in 2014. Thought about taking some time off, but it looks like he's ready to be competitive behind the wheel of a race car in 2014 if he can find a ride. But the gentleman that's going to take his ride, Tommy Barrett, had a much successful season uh, in 2012 on the Millennium Modified Racing Series portion. Uh, he won multiple races, including one of their finales at the Wii USA Speedway, the Oktoberfest weekend. Uh, finished in the top three in the point standings, winning various events. In the top three at various events, Barrett's surely going to be a threat behind the wheel of the 22. It is a rookie season for him, but he's been fast since he was 15. He's currently at the age of 18 years old. Uh, he's out of Mills, Massachusetts. He was 15 when he first got behind the wheel of an SK Modified, and he's recorded 14 victories at Stafford in an SK, and now he's moved over to the Millennium Modified Racing Series and to put himself in position to the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour for 2014. Kyle, I do want to uh, ask you real quick your opinion on the move. I know Chris Orr offered Mike Stefanik a part-time deal in a second car with the team for 2014, but Mike turned him down. Your thoughts on Mike's decision? Uh, do you see Mike coming in any way, shape, or form back onto the tour next year in anything but a full-time ride? Uh, I don't personally. I think Mike, uh, if Mike's not going to be able to compete full-time, Mike won't be back in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Uh, rumor had it that the Fanuc was going to try and compete full-time at one point uh, with Northeast Race Cars equipment on the Valenti Modified Racing Series. But that rumor was shot down by Mike. Uh, saying that he wanted to stay on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour circuit. Personally, if it's not a full-time ride, I would not expect Stefanik to be taking part-time rides, except if they were going to be races as such, maybe the Bristol uh, Motor Speedway or the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Uh, don't expect Stefanik to be running part-time, though, in 2014. He's going to do his best, and he may be able to find a full-time ride, especially with, uh, unfortunately, the downfall of the Tour over the last couple of seasons. And I know uh, Stefanik, not the only driver making announcements as to their plans for 2014 earlier this week. A big announcement uh, coming out of the Mike Smeriglio stable this week as well. Doug Kobe moving over to the number two for 2014. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, Todd Zegedy announced that uh, he and Mike were going to part ways with that number two. It would open the seat for a full-time ride in 2014, and much speculation had come over the past couple of weeks. I think I reported it on our Motorsports Madness show on Tuesday a couple of weeks ago uh, that Doug was going to be a part-time competitor for the ride, and it was announced this week that he's going to be running that car full-time in 2014. He confirmed it finally uh, to RacedayConnecticut.com up here in the Northeast. It had been widely, widely talked about, but it finally came together this week that he's going to be full-time behind the wheel of Mike's number two. Uh, Doug's competed on the tour for various seasons. He's also won various SK Modified races at Stafford and Thompson. And over the last couple of seasons, he's been competing for Wayne Darling in the B Beamer 52 Modified. Of course, he's the 2011 uh, champion of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. And Doug's going to be running full-time with that number two. That's going to be another championship threat effort. Doug, he won a couple of races over the past couple of seasons in it. He was strong. In 2012, I remember a race at the Thompson Speedway that he led most of the event uh, that I was at, but Todd's picking up a win uh, at New Hampshire during points of this career in the NASCAR Tour. 
uh, his ride unsure for 2014, but uh, some exciting news for Doug taking the uh, number two headed towards what could be a championship uh, on the horizon in 2014. We know how strong that Smeriglio-led number two team has been over the years with Todd Zegedy. They've come very, very close to uh, title glory several times. Of course, Zegedy going to victory lane in that number two at New Hampshire in the fall this season. Any word on Zegedy's plans for 2014? It's been very, very quiet for him uh, after he announced he was leaving the number two. Any clue as to whether he'll end up on the tour next year? Todd Zegedy, uh he asked three or four weeks ago that he wasn't going to be returning, and it's a strange part for Zegedy, uh, because he and Doug Kobe are they're two of the best friends for each other on the tour. He's 37 right now. He's the 2003 champion of the NASCAR Wheel and Model Fight Tour, and he uh, spoke to RacingConnecticut.com, Sean Concourse, earlier this week, and he mentioned that he was just a little bit unsure about what was going to happen. He had a great time with the two, but he agreed, along with Mike, that it was time to part ways and give somebody else a chance he has a desire to continue competing on the tour, but right now he's given it little thought and he's made virtually no effort to try and get a ride for 2014. I would expect Zegedy to compete in some races in 2014, but I would not expect a full-time ride out of Todd. Uh, seemingly enough, maybe his career is starting to wind down at 37. He's won various races and been competitive in that number two, uh, as you said, fighting for championships, so we'll have to see. Uh, but I would not expect a full-time ride, at least in 2014, for Todd Zegedy. And, of course, one big modified racing event from over the past weekend, over the Thanksgiving holiday, and that was Turkey Derby 40 up at Wall Stadium. Certainly a big modified event to round out the year every year on the calendar. And uh, a lot went down in this year's Turkey Derby. Some interesting storylines, but in the end, a little bit more of the same. Yep, Matt Hirsch from Jacob. What a gentleman. He has won various races, not only up here in the Northeast, but all throughout New England, through virtually the East Coast. And he did it again uh, this past weekend at the Turkey Derby, taking the 125 lap toward tight modified portion. Uh, most recently, he won at the Caraway Speedway in the North South Shootout a couple of weeks ago. But this past weekend at Wall Stadium, he took home another victory for him. He passed for what was the leader, Ron Tennick, on a late race restart. Tennick. On the other hand, it's the 2013 champion of the Valeni Modified Racing Series. Uh, he had a strong car this past weekend. The Huntington Valley, Pennsylvania driver was very, very strong. He came home third after that late race restart skirmish where we got Hirschman, an eventual second place finisher. We just spoke about him, Doug Kobe, uh, coming home second, then hanging on for third. It looked like Danny Bone was going to take control of this one. He led the first 120 laps, but unlike some of the others, he decided to pit late in the event. Instead of Hirschman and those guys pitting earlier, uh, even though they didn't have the freshest tires at the end, they had the track position needed. And Matt takes another one in 2013. It's a sweep of the late season shows for him uh, on the East Coast. As I mentioned, he took the North-South shootout at Caraway, And this past weekend, Matt Hirschman adds his name to another list of winners and uh, continues his low nickname of Big Money Matt. He certainly does. And... Kyle, as always, we appreciate you coming on the show and uh, giving us all the latest scoops from around the Northeast and the world of the tour-type modifieds. Uh, certainly looking forward to hearing a lot more over the coming weeks of the off offseason. Uh, we'll look forward to hopefully having you back on the show Tuesday night uh, for Motorsports Madness. But until then, we'll bid you farewell for tonight and look forward to talking to you again here on the show soon. Sounds good, Jacob. I hope to be back live next week. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully things pan out technology-wise. But uh, thanks for having me tonight, Tom. Uh, continue this show. Have a good night. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. And uh, just like Kyle said, uh, we will continue the show for him here, Tom. Uh, I want to ask you, because this was the big thing that uh, Kyle and I discussed uh, both on the microphone and off it earlier today, because it's been the hot topic of discussion in the Northeast, and that is the potential of a 2014 Wheel and Modified Tour without Mike Stefanik. We know Tommy Barrett's taking over that 22 ride next year. We know Stefanik was offered a part-time ride in a second car and turned it down with Chris Orr. Where does the 2014 Tour go without Mike Stefanik, the all-time champion, wins leader, polls winner? You're losing a legend, and uh, it's really going to be tough on the Tour next year without Mike Stefanik, I feel. Well, it certainly will be different. I think it's kind of ironic, maybe fitting, that 
it was Tommy Barrett that is stepping into the car that Mike Stefanik is stepping out of because Tommy, obviously one of the young guns who is just making a name for himself on the tour. Uh, you know, I think that um, there's a, there's definitely been a change of the guard over the last couple of years on the tour. And I would kind of liken that this situation, the tour being without Mike Stefanik would be, you know, a lot like super modified racing without Bentley Warren or, Maybe, you know, cup racing without uh, Richard Petty. I mean, you, you, when you lose that legend, it takes a little while for everybody to adjust. But the good news is there's a lot of young talent. There's a lot of veteran talent still on the tour. The number may be a little smaller next year. The tour may be maybe not quite as uh, deep in terms of car counts as it's been. But there's certainly going to still be some fantastic racing and you know it is it would be a shame to see mike stefanik not racing the tour but mike has been, like we said he's been around a long time he's he's just accomplished so much and you know we'll see what he decides to do for the 2014 season it should certainly be very interesting to watch and with that we will throw our second caution flag and our final one for the evening here on the stock car steel sri motorsports report when we come back Jacob continued his busy week as uh, he chatted with Kyle Weatherman, one of the up-and-coming young ARCA racers. You're going to want to hear this interview, folks. Definitely a talented young man and very well-spoken as well. That is coming up right after this. You are listening to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report on Race Chaser Online and Speed 77 Radio. Stay with us. For 17 years, Stock Car Steel has been a leading material supplier to the racing industry. We're proud they're a motorsports content partner here at Race Chaser Online. The biggest names in NASCAR trust Stock Car Steel for raw materials such as carbon steel, chrome molly, DOM, aluminum, plastics, and much more. You can't build a race car without the basic materials, and Stock Car Steel is the place to get them. Don't forget to also visit Stock Car Steel's sister company, SRI Supplies, for racing and industry. SRI is the place to go for all your shop supply needs. Not Nuts, bolts, rivets, tapes, adhesives, cutting tools, chemicals, body shop supplies, paint shop supplies, lubricants, and more. A well-stocked race shop is a winning race shop, and the path to winning begins with three letters, SRI. For more information, visit StockCarSteel.com or SRI-Supplies.com. Check them both out on Facebook or call them toll-free at 1-888-752-7272, 1-888-752-7272. Hi, this is Jamie McMurray here for RAD, the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. Want to make a difference? It's simple. Be responsible. Plan ahead. Designate before you celebrate. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. I'm Jacob Seelman. And I'm Tom Baker. You're listening to Speed 77 Radio. Powered by Race Chaser Online. We are your home for motorsports. Welcome back to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report. Baker along with Jacob Seelman. And so far on tonight's show, we have gone from the southeast talking about the Snowball Derby down in Pensacola, Florida, to the Northeast, talking about the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour and all the musical chairs going on in that series for 2014. We now continue our cross-country tour here on tonight's program by going to the Midwest, where there's a Missouri driver named Kyle Weatherman, who has made a very quick impact on the ARCA series. And Jacob, I know you had a chance to spend some time chatting with this young man and this is definitely a driver to watch for sure. Yes, it is. There's not a lot of young talents that uh, could just come into a national stock car tour and finish fourth in their debut, uh, much less do it at a track as tough as uh, the short track at Salem Speedway in Salem, Indiana, but that's exactly what Kyle Weatherman did uh, to start his ARCA career in 2013, and from there, he has been an absolute sensation. Worst finish of 12th in five starts, average finish of 4.8, and a pair of runner-up finishes at Iowa and the 
the return to Salem in late September. This kid has been an absolute rocket ship on these short tracks, and I have no doubt that if we see him in an ARCA car in 2014, he's going to be a threat for a couple of wins. He made a name for himself, just like another young man uh, that we've talked about on this show several times did in the Legends Car ranks. Daniel Hemrick, Weatherman won the Pro National Championship in 2011 in the Legends Cars, as well as the Asphalt Nationals in the Pro Division in 2011. This is a kid that's racked up a ton of accolades in a short time, and he's only 16 years old, and I have a feeling watching him over the past couple months, he's only going to get better. I would tend to agree, and you had a chance to chat with him. Let's hear what he had to say. Kyle Weatherman with Jacob Seelman. Kyle, certainly you've had a very, very quick ascension to the top of the ranks at a young age, just being 16 years old. Talk a little bit about your uh, rise through the Legends ranks up towards the stock car ranks and some of your experiences as you've moved up the ladder in motorsport. You know, we, uh, we definitely have our stuff going right right now. Um, we've got our own deal going on. We don't have really really anybody helping us, which uh, I guess isn't too bad of a thing, but, you know, uh, we're doing it ourselves, and uh, we're having fun. That's the main point. Um, you know, we've got, got our own little deal in North Carolina that we've got going for the for the ARCA stuff, and we've got legend cars going all the way around. So, you know, we're having fun, and, uh, you know, I'm ready, really excited for next year, that's for sure. Talk a little bit about your 2013 season, uh, certainly back and forth between a couple of different disciplines. You ran the Legends car some, but certainly made a big splash in the ARCA Racing Series. Five starts and four top four finishes. Uh, did you anticipate the kind of success you were going to have so soon in the full-bodied stock car this year? To be honest, uh, I was kind of expecting like a top ten around that range, but <laughs> a top five is definitely definitely over what I expected. Um, I'm definitely not doubting our team or anything. Just you know, just getting started and you know, learning all the curves and everything. I was expecting around a top top ten or something, but uh, you know, we definitely we definitely did real well in this past season. I'm definitely definitely very impressed with what we've got going. You know, I'm really excited for next year also. So uh, I'm definitely definitely ready to get started already again. I know certainly you uh, shocked some of the ARCA world when you came in and ran as strong as you did on some of the bull rings uh, in the short track world, tracks like uh, Salem Speedway, Toledo, Iowa. Certainly that run at Iowa that you had uh, turned a lot of heads, took the lead in the latter stages of that race, and it looked like you were going to score a breakthrough win. Ultimately, uh, Grant Enfinger getting by you there with just about 10 laps to go. But what did that race at Iowa do for your confidence and your belief in this team going forward? Because you made a huge splash that evening. Yeah, it, uh, it definitely raised the confidence for our whole team, to be honest. You know, we, we had a great run. We really did. We ran up front all day, and, uh, you know, it came a little short there at the end. But, uh, you know, all in all, still a good day. Um, but unfortunately, we're not going back there next year. That kind of kind of depressed me whenever I heard about that. But uh, you know, they're still, they're, they heard we might be adding another another race or so. So I'm I'm still excited for next year. It'll be a lot of fun. Going forward, obviously, you had the huge runs in the ARCA series this year. Uh, what did you learn from your limited schedule in ARCA here in 2013 that you can use going forward to next year? Well, I mean, you got to learn the competition, and that's that's the main thing that you got to learn first. You got to learn what other people do and don't, you know. Um, so we definitely got that that mostly under control there, and then uh, you know, just getting the feel of the race car, what what it'll need for the longer run, the, for whatever uh, you got going on. So uh, you know, we we learned a little bit. You know, definitely definitely ready. Going forward to 2014, obviously the off season gives a lot of time to start getting plans shored up. What does 2014 look like on the racing front for you? Uh, anything you can tell us just yet? What should we expect from Kyle Weatherman for 2014? Uh, we're still we're still talking with a couple stuff there. Um, not nothing really settled yet. Um, I will know later on for sure, but uh, nothing really nothing really settled yet. But uh, we'll definitely be there. That's for sure. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> Certainly nothing uh, more satisfying than hearing a young driver that just can't wait to get back behind the wheel. What does it mean for a young guy like you who's trying to make it in the top levels of motorsports to have a season like you did this year where you've had so much go right? What does it do for your confidence going forward? Well, it definitely raises your confidence level. When you're racing against against all those guys that have been doing it a couple years and all that, it, uh, 
and then, you know, running with them and everything, it definitely raises your confidence level up. Um, you know, and, uh, I'm def- definitely, uh, thankful for all the guys running me and all that running clean and everything. I definitely had a good race and good season for the, for everybody. And obviously, uh, your good season couldn't be possible on your own. Certainly a lot of people, a lot of supporters behind you that make it happen. Who makes it happen for Kyle Weatherman? Uh, there's, there's, there's a good bit of people that definitely helped me out. I've, uh, I've got to thank my dad, my mom, my brother, my sister, uh, Michael Harper, crew chief there, and, uh, Lee Keach. Um, there, there's a whole bunch of guys there that, uh, Without them, I definitely couldn't move forward. So I gotta definitely thank them first. A lot of accolades, uh, four Legends Car National Championships, four top four finishes in ARCA to start your career. A lot of things rolling forward for you. Kyle Weatherman, looking for more success going forward in 2014, and all of us at Speed 77 Radio and Race Chaser Online looking to see you get back behind the wheel and certainly hope you'll keep us abreast, uh, as well as the race fans as well, of your plans as we get closer to that 2014 season getting started. And thank you for taking some time to talk with us here this afternoon. No problem. I appreciate you having me on there and everything. And, yes, I will keep you guys updated on what's going on and what we got moving forward, that's for sure. And I'll say this, with the age requirements being lowered uh, as far as NASCAR down to 16, I would gander if the sponsors will flock to this young man, which with the way he's carried himself and presented himself through this 2013 season, I can't imagine a sponsor not at least taking a look at him for next year, that we might just see Kyle Weatherman in a NASCAR Camping World truck before it's all said and done. But uh, a couple of tidbits real quick, Tom, before we close the show tonight. Uh, I know it's not our normal mainstream here for the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report, but it is news from the day. Uh, The NMPA Myers Brothers luncheon from this afternoon, I I spent some time watching that from out in Las Vegas this afternoon. Uh, Cue the E-Trade baby shock face again, perhaps. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins the most popular driver award for the 11th consecutive time. And Tony Stewart (laughs) honored with the Myers Brothers Award for outstanding contributions to the sport of stock car racing. He managed to walk all the way up to the stage unassisted. And that was a standing ovation right there. I don't think there was anybody that didn't like to see that. All of that's good, and of course, nobody is surprised, I'm sure, that Junior got the most popular driver again, but uh, definitely good that Tony got that award, and great to see that he was able to walk to the stage. You just know that uh, he's chopping at the bit to get back in the race car, and I'm sure that come January, when they get ready for uh, Daytona testing, that uh, old smoke will be ready to go, (laughs) and uh, I'm sure he'll be on the edge uh, all the way through Daytona this year, having had that break. He's going to have a lot of stored up adrenaline and come back, I think, for a new appreciation uh, of what he has and the the opportunities that he has. And and certainly Stuart Haas Racing going to be a team to watch in 2014, even if only for the entertainment value. But surely uh, four chances at a championship with Stuart Haas Racing come next year. So thank you for those tidbits, Jacob. And that will bring out the checkered flag on tonight's Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report. With a little overtime tonight and happy to do it. Our show is a Race Chaser Online Speed 77 radio production and can be heard in podcast form beginning 24 hours after the live broadcast by visiting Race Chaser Online's YouTube channel. Our special thanks go to Jacob Seelman of Speed 77 Radio for filling in quite capably tonight for Kyle Souza, as well as to the folks at Stock Car Steel SRI Supplies for making this show possible. You can join Jacob and me, as well as our cast of characters, every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. right here on Speed 77 Radio's live stream for the Motorsports Madness Show. A full hour and more of news and lively conversation from around the motorsports world. Until next Thursday when we have our next edition of the Stock Car Still SRI Motorsports Report, which will feature, among other guests, Clint King, who will be the newest NASCAR k Series East racer next year. He'll tell us all about it. Come next Thursday right here on this show. Until then, I'm Tom Baker inviting you to check out StockCarSteel.com and SRI-Supplies.com for all your racing needs. For all the news of the day in motorsports, your first choice for short track news and driver interviews on the web, 
is Speed 77 Radio, powered by RaceChaserOnline.com. So long, everyone, and have yourself a safe racing weekend. Bye-bye.